So we have two people on iPhone. Is it iPhone 2? That's just Lisa? Or is it two people whose screens are turned off? Cameras. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we've got Michelle and Lisa, and you and me and Charlie. Okay. And let's see. Um, I don't know if we're live on Facebook. Do you want me to look? Yeah. Uh, I can look on my iPad. Okay. You should look at oh, the, the tub doesn't overfill is where you should look. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see water coming in the background. <laughs> Lynn is live now. There you go. I see me. You, you. see it? Because I'll look at my oh, iPad. Yeah. I see it. You see it? Okay. <laughs> Okay, great. So welcome everybody to Soma Life Sundays, A Journey with Spirit. We're very excited to have you with us. My name is Reverend Lynn Laborde and joining us uh, tonight is Charlie Tedesco. This is the magnificent Robert Scarpa and uh, many of our friends who are logging in and signing in from all over the place. Um, this was born of Rob and I having a conversation in which he says, I want to start doing uh, live sessions. And I was like, what a great idea. And he said, will you do them with me? And I was like, sure. So it turned into Soma Life Sundays. We're going to be doing this every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're inviting people from our spiritual communities, people that we know, probably even some people that we don't know, to come and join us on this journey. And I am just thrilled and delighted. I personally uh, channel half a dozen or so beings um hey lise welcome hi uh rob uh does this brilliant body of work of channeling uh doing automatic writings and charlie is the first guest we're having this is our second <laughs> second event our first was last week and um charlie charlie is astounding i have an incredible history with charlie and i'll i'll go into that a little bit later but um, Charlie teaches, uh, teaches sacred geometry. He teaches about the, the use of sound um, for healing and all kinds of incredible aspects that have to do with kind of the scientific part of spirituality. Um, so Rob, let me just turn it over for, to you. Please introduce yourself and, and tell us what you're all about. What am I all about? All right, huh? that's a good question. Um, my name is Rob, Rob Scarpa. Uh, I'm a channel. I, I guess I should be referring to myself more as a scribe now because uh, the bulk of the information that I receive is written uh, with the pen, put on paper, automatic writing, um, and uh, it doesn't. There's, it seems that there's no limit to who we can dial in, who we can dial up. Um, if there's a specific energy or entity, you know, it's a matter of reaching out and uh, asking for that energy to come in and ask if there's a message and then it just starts to flow um it's it's that's it, i don't want to say it's that simple but that's what it is it's it's channeling the ascended uh scribe to the ascended i never know what the what the message is going to be unless i ask for something specific and uh, every message is always of light and love of reassurance that um we have hit this marker uh in which the earth is going into a new uh paradigm the age of aquarius um and we're moving away from this duality based system of uh, power over and power versus power under and we're moving into a more balanced and uh, equitable system of abundance for everybody and uh, it makes sense that it's happening in 2020 because 2020 is balance uh tonight is all about balance because we're uh, yeah, the first day of fall right we're in an, uh, an equinox here the equal yeah. amount of day and night so it's really a big day of balance and a balance of energies. Um, for me, it was very exhausting today. I have to say, I was very tired, very, very tired today. And I had a full night's sleep. So uh, it's all about that uh, recalibration and integration of the new frequencies coming in from our galactic center, I guess. That's One great. of the things that was going on this weekend is it was Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah is the start of the year. It's the head of the year. And it's a time when the book of life is opened and when the Akashic records for each of us are opened. 
and the masters, teachers, and loved ones and the lords of the records take a look at our actions and our thoughts and our words and our deeds for the past year. And then they decide whether or not, you know, we're continuing to live on this year and what our tacoon or basically what our karma is going to be, what lessons we need to repeat because we didn't learn them the first time, <laughs> who is going to come along and we're going to go, why does this keep happening to me? Because you're meant to interact or act from a place of neutrality rather than a place of reaction. And uh, today was the day of judgment. The thing that I also noticed is when it's Rosh Hashanah, the sky is crystal blue, crystal clear. They come in and they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's really fascinating. You'll see that over the next several days. But today is the day that the day of judgment, the day that the shofar is blown. And so it was, it's been really a very powerful and intense time. Um, so there was some of that that was definitely going on. Uh, Charlie, please introduce yourself so everybody can get to know you. Hi, my name is Charlie and I, well, I'm one of the teachers over at Soma Life Sanctuary. I've been teaching here since they opened and it's been how long now, Lynn? How three years. years. Is it three? Yeah. Yeah, three years and uh, it's been a great adventure and got to, you know, not only do I, I teach, but I get to learn a lot from the students that go there as well, because there's people that attend there from so many different backgrounds with so many different talents that uh, I'm learning as, as, as much as they are at the same time, which is a great thing. The first time I met Charlie, I was invited uh, with a couple friends and my business partner, James, and we went to an event over at the Eyes of Learning Center which is a spiritual community here on Long Island. We're in Huntington, New York. And uh, when I looked at Charlie, he was gonna be teaching a, cl a class on sacred geometry. And I was like, oh my God, I love that topic. And I looked at Charlie across a very crowded room. I think there were like 80 people in that room, right, Charlie? Yeah, it was pretty busy that night. <laughs> in my <laughs> mind's eye, I think you expected 40 and it was just- Yeah, they told me 40. <laughs> yeah, and there were 80 people there. Uh, in my mind's eye, Charlie was wearing a golden Egyptian crown. And I looked at him and I blinked and I was like, what the, couldn't make out what it was. And when I was getting dressed that night, they told me to put on a Moldavite necklace, which was unusual because I don't usually wear it. It's a very powerful crystal. So Charlie is, is talking and he tells the story of how when his best friend's father was dying, he went to the hospital basically to give him his last rites. And the prayer that he said, and when Charlie said these words, they became indelibly etched inside of my heart and my soul. Wow. And the words that. he said were, may his soul receive the highest elevation possible given his good works this lifetime. And I was just blown away by that. So then the story goes that his best friend's sister went to see a psychic several months later and the father comes through and says, please thank your brother for the priest that was at my bedside. And he goes, priest? There wasn't a priest there, it was Charlie. So he went back to Charlie and he says, Charlie, why did my dad say you were a priest? And Charlie said, I'm a priest in the order of Melchizedek. And I almost fell off my chair because at that moment there was a download from spirit. And it said to me, this is the order that Jesus was ordained into. And I was like, what? So I went up to Charlie at the end of the event. And I said, I'd like to find out about being ordained in the order of Melchizedek as you were. And you said to me, oh, there's a guy named Reverend Dan and he does the ord or ordinations. He comes to the island once a month. And I reached out to him and he couldn't make it that year. For some reason, the class wasn't big enough. So in November, in the winter, in like eight inches of snow, my business partner, James and I drive six hours up near Geneseo to go do these ordinations with Reverend Dan. And it changed my life. And then it's changed almost a hundred people here on the island because then we hosted Reverend Dan to come down. So Charlie, you've made a huge, huge difference in my life. It's just amazing how it networks. Oh, it's crazy. And, oh, and people really connect to that ordination because there's just something very special about it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. people, people like the, the sense of the order that it's all about the oneness of everything. Yeah. It's really beautiful. I know Rob's been ordained and a, few other people. Rob, I hope I didn't out you by saying that. <laughs> um, the other thing that, that was amazing is as I walked up to Charlie, Spirit said to me, you got to give him your, your Moldavite. And I was like, I don't want to give him my Moldavite. <laughs> and Spirit was like, you got to give him your Moldavite. And I was like, okay, fine. So I literally took it off my neck and I handed it to him. And I said, here, this is for you. And he goes, I can't take that. And I said, listen to me. I don't want to give it to you. <laughs> but Spirit says, I got to give it to you. So you have to take this. 
Anyway, and then he gave me this gorgeous Merkaba that I have hanging in the sanctuary. So Charlie has been dear, very, very dear to us in the work that we do here. Um, it, it was the, uh, the, the, what is it called? The, the Day of the Dead mm -hmm. in 2017. And right. we had eight foot pyramids set up in the sanctuary. And Charlie came in with these drums and we did this beautiful ceremony to honor the dead. And Charlie helped us open a portal here in the sanctuary. And, you know, it's just, it's really been an extraordinary journey. So I'm delighted to have you here. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for having me as always. Yeah. It's, it's always an honor, the honor and privilege is all mine. Yeah. Charlie was, uh, one time my mom ended up in the hospital and Charlie was the one, one of the only of my friends who not only came to the hospital to see how my mother was, but he bought her this beautiful gift of this little angel. It's really precious. So you, you mean the world to me. And right um, back at you. Rob, I love you. <laughs> love you. Um, Rob, would you please, sh I know that there were two writings that you said that you had and Spirit is asking now for you to read the second one first. Okay, there we go. I have an answer now because I wasn't sure which one to read. <laughs> right. Give me, just give, bear with me one minute. Oh. Absolutely. I had the first one open. Now I got to open the second one. Okay. 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 And Rob, uh, thank you for being so like selfless with these, with the, with sharing the messages. They're, they make a difference and they really they're help. They're so amazing. And, I, I don't feel that it's selfless. That. I feel like these messages are for, intended for everyone. Even the messages that like single me out, I kind of feel a little uncomfortable sometimes because they, you know, it gets specific to me within right. the message. But then I said, but in oneness, we're all one and we're all in this together. We're all doing this. So that's it. So I don't edit them. I'm not allowed to edit them. I would, you know, <laughs> I was told that early on. Don't edit anything out. Don't add anything to it. Just say it, you know, as it comes in. So um, this morning, actually, this is the third message I received this morning, um, and this is this is specific to this evening's uh, gathering. And uh, in this particular one, I reached out to Osiris, who is my higher self, my engineer, my gatekeeper. And uh, I said to him, Osiris, please connect me with whoever has a message for the collective this day that I may share with all of humanity. And he said, well, that's an easy task for there are so many who want to project their love and light upon each and every soul on Gaia. For, <clears throat> for as you already know, there are legions of light within and around your sphere who are awaiting that final push of energy to affect and establish a new protocol of light, love, and abundance for all. You and many may not realize the effects that are felt each time you join together with thoughtful prayer and intention. Each time a group is assembled, be it two or more, the power of love combined with the power of transmutation are rinsing and cleaning all that has not served humanity for many a cycle. With great excitement and love is this new paradigm taking hold. And with each passing moment, each passing day, the systems of old are crumbling and making way for the fair and balanced system of existence upon Gaia. Understanding that your earth is still in that rinse cycle and more and more love is being applied. Compassion has been in short supply right now, but is making a comeback. So please continue each and every moment of each and every day to emit that frequency, for it does dissolve and consume all of a lesser vibration with each application. Today, as with each and every day, is a red letter day for Mother Earth, each one bringing you closer and closer to the heaven on earth set forth within the plan of ascension. We are working diligently behind the scenes every moment to bring about the everlasting reality of balance, of harmony among all races, that is the goal, that was the plan, and now is coming to fruition. So do not be deterred by the words spoken by those who live in fear, for they have simply not recognized their own divinity. All will have that moment, the opportunity to accept and step into the next cycle that is and always was available. The return to oneness is happening, and we thank you for all your efforts. The Galactic Command. Beautiful. Nice. Do you, you never know who's coming through, do you? Sometimes it's, they tell me in advance, you know, in the beginning, they'll announce who they are. Uh, Lakshmi, especially, 
Um, but this particular one, Osiris just said a legion of light. So a legion of light normally is, is a galactic entity or energy, you know, um, you know, some of them get pretty specific ships and different things like that. But just to know that they're all out there, keeping an eye on us, watching out for us and helping us to get to this ascension point with the least amount of anguish and loss of, uh, of life as possible, really, because we know that we're having some crazy storms and crazy weather and and, uh, you know, we talk about the rinse cycle. They mentioned it again last week in our message. Talked about a washing machine, right? Uh, the world was like a, a washing machine and we're going through the cycle of cleansing. So, uh, Beautiful. yeah, that was it. Thank you. So there's just a couple quick comments on Facebook that I wanted to um, reflect back to you guys. Lynn Hansen is watching us on Facebook and she said hi to both you, Rob, and to you, Charlie. Uh, Lynn has had a remarkable transformation. She has dropped about 130 pounds and she looks gorgeous. Wow. And she Amazing. was here that night, Charlie, when we opened that yep, port. And she was saying yep. it was really, really magical. And then Mary Bren was just saying, hey, Mary, that um, she took that uh, sacred, geometry, sacred geometry training with you, Charlie, and the sound healing. Yeah, and she's taking was, a few classes. Yeah, yeah she was also um, ordained by Reverend Dan. So that's Great. really beautiful. Wow. And uh, Deb was saying, thank you. And that was really beautiful. That's amazing. Um, so I wanted to share something that's happened that I've been really reluctant to share with too many people because it kind of blew my mind. But on Friday, uh, not this Friday, but last Friday, I had a client who was in deep, deep distress and was feeling that um, she didn't want to be alive anymore. And I was in the middle of doing uh, an Akashic record reading with her and she was screaming at the record. She was just really mad and upset. And at one point she was talking about how she was mad at God and I felt the presence of Jesus come in. And he asked me if it was okay if he stepped in and spoke to her and started having an interaction with her. And I was basically channeling him. And she said, you know, who is this God? And he said, I am the one that you know as Jesus. And I on the inside was like, <laughs> No, I can't I have a bliss. So we finished the session. And um, then I told like one of my girlfriends and she was like, oh my God. And I said, I, you know, I don't know that I can do this. And he's saying to me, you've been prepared for this. So then I got in front of a group of girlfriends and I intentionally brought him through. And afterwards I, I ugly cried for several minutes, like feeling like, am I worthy of this? Do you know, like, can I handle that much love. So this journey of channeling has been extraordinary. It started with Pallas Athena for me, um, actually bringing her through, you know, over three years ago, and then came Hathor, and then came Archangel Michael and Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary. And, you know, there are times when I can indeed call them forth, and there are times when they just show up. And so my latest journey has been with, uh, with Jesus. I'm studying the Course of Miracles, and there's a group of us who get together early in the morning, and we're reading the 50 principles of the Course of Miracles, and he comes in and he explains them to me, and he's been talking about miracles, and he's saying that every time a miracle occurs, every time someone remembers their relationship with God, what they're doing is they're reconnecting to the light of their truth. They're reconnecting to the light of divinity, and they're putting themselves in their right mind literally coming out of the mind of the ego and connecting with the mind of God, the will of God. And I just thought that was really beautiful. Charlie, did you want to speak any more on that? Sure. And it's interesting that you bring that up because um, I try to journal, whatever something comes to me, my meditations in the morning, I'll try to journal it down. And uh, one of the things that has been resonating and allowing me to feel myself on a little bit of a higher vibration. And it, it almost takes me to, I want to say a place of like, I feel like a, a sense of timelessness and, and divine peace. And uh, the particular mantra that I've been practicing over the past, it's only been like two weeks now is I'll repeat the mantra. I am now transforming to divine light. Mm. I am now transforming to God's divine light. And every time I say that, I imagine, because everything is energy, we're, we're made up of protons, electrons, neutrons, we're made up of this energetic being. Now, the point is to uh, imagine and envision, get a vision of that being, of that self, 
and imagine yourself on an energetic level going to light, transforming to light. And as we do that, and as we vision that, we become that. And in the, the feeling of doing that mantra, every time you say it, I now, you could say transmute, I now transform to God's divine light. And you imagine yourself and your body going to white light, transforming to white light, you know, just like you have creatures in nature that do transformations, you know, the, the caterpillar transforms to the butterfly. It's the same energetic being. Mm. right imagine a caterpillar like thinking about transforming to the butterfly and then becoming that well you're thinking about transforming to the light and you're becoming that you are what you think you are what you feel you are what you see you are what you hear you are that so if you can encompass all of your sentences while you're doing that that mantra i now transform to light you go you actually there's a part of you your being that is going to that light and then you're able to raise and that's one of the ways of raising your vibration um the other thing that you said earlier before with the lady that was going through a, a difficult time in her transformation um mm -hmm. you know it's interesting uh the guru that i go to is a native american and when i first met her my everything on a spiritual level for me was like almost on a roller coaster i was going through like really high ups and then really low lows um and she said, she's like, you, she said, you're on a spiritual roller coaster. She's like, I could see it. I could feel it. I said, how do I, I said, how do I make that easier? How do I work through that? So here's the tool that she gave me. She says, it's okay for you to ask God, God, please teach me the lessons that I need to learn. And as you teach me those lessons, allow that the, the, the lessons to transpire and transform uh, and allow me not to have the higher the highest highs and the lowest lows allow me to learn what i need to learn for my divine purpose without the extremes it's beautiful. and then as soon as i started to say and practice and use that tool things began to even out a little bit more wow so i'm not could you repeat it again the low lows and the, and the high highs like i was could you repeat it again sure it, it's going to be let's see if i can try to remember exactly what she told me um, it's going to be, you know, dear, it's like you're saying, writing a letter to God, dear God, I ask you to give me the lessons that I need to learn in this lifetime without going and experiencing the extreme lows. Thank you. That's okay. really beautiful. And, and that, and that will help not allow you to like really face that lesson, like as, as head on or needing substance or medication to, to help you get through it. Right. Uh, God, in a way, is like lessening or easing that amount of um, easing, e easing that lesson and, and, and what comes with it without it going through an extreme uh, on an emotional level. I was just told that it's you're given you're given grace. You're given God's grace when you ask for it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're told over and over in, in our messages. I know that when I channel over and over, they say, call out for us reach out for us. And Charlie, you were one of the first people that uh, taught me about um, uh, St. Germain and the Violet Flame. And Rob, I know that, that that's come across in some of the channelings that you've done. Do you, do you have any of those channelings at hand, Rob, that oh, mentioned? pretty consistent. I mean, with regard to the Violet, um, you know, uh, my studies started primarily with St. Germain. Uh, that's how I was in, you know, I want to say indoctrinated, but broke into this uh, area of metaphysics here, you know, spirituality. Uh, and it started with Saint Germain and the use of the violet consuming flame uh, as the panacea for transmutation of all that doesn't serve us. One of my brother Norbert's favorite words, the panacea. Um, and that particular message uh, is a common thread through most of my messages the first two messages i received this morning were both from saint germain before the message from the galactic command that i read to you um do you want to share one of those messages from saint guess, germain? yeah the first one the second one is somebody who asked me to dial them up saint germain up so that they they had some questions of their own so that one i'm not privy to share but this first message i will share with you just give me one sec okay and then charlie i'm going to ask you if you would take us through one of the violet flame invocations. Yeah, sure we could do that when he's done that would be beautiful mm. 
Okay. Um, and listen, just a couple messages. Lynn Hansen said, love the words of wisdom. Charlie, thank you. Deborah said, thank you so much. And uh, Tammy's here as well. And she said, love that, Charlie. So we're getting, we're getting feedback, guys. Thank you. We've got, uh, you. We've got about nine people that are live with us uh, over on Facebook while we've got about uh, nine of us over here. This is so much fun. We love this. I want to apologize. The first message was not from St. Germain this morning. It was from Lakshmi. It was a Hindu goddess. So the second one was from St. Germain. But uh, okay. I will, will share the up? first message with you because it is important um, and it applies to everyone. Uh, greetings, beloved. It is I, your Lakshmi, and I am here this day in this moment of your time to assure you of your success in expanding and teaching so many of so many of the ability to connect with their higher selves, their inner dialogue. As each soul begins the reconnection process, a sense of disease may befall them. Quite often it is referred to as the ascension sickness. For it's not a sickness at all, but a release of so much that has been kept holding them, holding their breath as if waiting for things to change. As you are aware, change can only come when someone is ready to be stuck is unwilling to release what may seem normal, but in truth, that is the abnormality that one has been accustomed to and is now the actual change is what's feared most. Okay. The body's effort to purge what has been carefully stored away in what is the management department of self. It is not for your eye to push, cajole, or incite release. It is solely up to each individual to find their own path towards oneness. So my advice to you and all light workers is to simply continue to shine brightly and know that your words and love are making a huge difference within all you come in contact with, whether physically or within the ethers that flow all around and about you. Again, we encourage all to begin the process of introspection for in that is the key to all that is. You are doing a masterful job and we recognize and honor your commitment and with great care and an abundance of love, we continue to support and expand upon the energies you emit. So please don't stop. We are almost to the finish line and a great celebration awaits. So again, I and we say, keep it up, keep it going. And most of all, enjoy and spread the love that is pouring down upon you and all humanity at this time. Enjoy your day, enjoy your family and friends, and enjoy the rewards that come your way. It is with great pleasure that our communication has been established this day, and we will do, do this again real soon. So just call on me and I'll be there. Your beloved Lakshmi. I love how they tell us to call on them. Yeah. I do know that the laws of spirituality are that they can't take action without our permission. So when Jesus came the other day, when I was with my client, you know, he said, may I step in? And I mean, he talks to me all the time and he makes recommendations, <laughs> some of which I follow and some of which I don't, but they ask all the time for us to ask for their help, for their intercession. I think that's really beautiful. Well, isn't that one of the rules of the universe? They're not allowed to reach out and talk to us. We have to ask first, right? Uh, well, I, you so know, I, I found that when I, you know, like with some of them, they have carte blanche with me, but I also know that there have been times that I'm like, okay, you need to go away and they go away. Like you have to call them back. Oh yeah. You have to call them back. They respect us in every way. They really do. Absolutely. Give us our space to make our own decisions. Yeah. If we ask for that guidance, left, right, up or down, then you know, then they respond. And then the trick is you have to learn to listen. You have to recognize what that sign, what that answer is. You know, yeah, sometimes exactly. it's, just, it's a butterfly going across the room. It's supposed to, you're supposed to be able to ascertain what the meaning of that is. <laughs> well, it, well, it's, you know, it's why we have free will. Yeah, but that's what makes it fun too. You know, yeah, they exactly. say that all the time. What, where would all the fun be if we gave you all the information? If we just laid it all out for you, then where's the challenge in this? Right. It's like playing chess against yourself. Right. Um, Charlie, what's your favorite uh, violet flame invocation? Well, my, well the, the three that I use most common is the three that are my favorites out. You know, there's so many different ones, but um, the three that I use the most of is the first one would be, I'm a being of violet fire. 
Um, oh my god! <laughs> so you put me on the spot. You mean the one that you, you say every day? I know. I'm right, so, let's I'm sorry. do. You know, we're gonna do. We're gonna, let's do. Two, we're gonna do tube of light. <laughs> I am the being um, beloved. I am presence bright. Bright. Beloved, I am presence bright. Round me, see your tube of light from ascended master flame. Call for it now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all this card sent to me. Um, I'm calling forth the violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire. All desire. You know, keeping, keeping on, on, and on in the freedom's name. name until I am one with the violet flame. And then my other, my other favorite is uh, I'm the violet flame in action in me now. I'm the violet flame to light on I bow. I'm the violet flame and mighty cause of power. I'm the light of God shining every hour. I'm the violet flame blazing like a sun. I am the violet flame uh, shining for everyone. Um, that's another popular, popular Sometimes one. Sometimes I, I just simply say violet flame come forth, violet flame come forth, violet right. flame come forth. And the simplest one I wanted to say before is I'm the flame, violet flame in action now. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the violet flame in action now. I'm the, I'm, I'm a being, ready? It's I'm a being of violet fire. I'm the purity God desires. That's it. And you just repeat that over and over again. I'm a being of violet fire. I'm the purity God desires. And you could say that easy enough throughout the day. And there's times where if you say it enough throughout the day, you will actually see, there's times you'll see like violet, like coming in throughout the day at certain times. So I came across the, the book <laughs> of uh, Elizabeth Clare Prophet about the violet flame many, 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 many years ago. And I didn't really do it as regular practice, but when I read the book, you know, it said you can surround people that you love with violet flame. And so I surrounded my mom and two of my best friends in violet flame. And within two days, they were both like, I'm having the most incredible nightmares. And I was like, <laughs> what did I do? Some kind of like purging they were having. Well, yeah. And then in the back of the book, it says, be very careful. So <laughs> what I want to, yeah, be, you know, do not just randomly surround people with violet flame unless they ask. So um, I, I've learned that uh, it's an incredible transmutation. And what I've seen from my studies of Kabbalah is every time we make a promise, there's a little pocket of light that will come to us if we keep that promise. But if we break that promise and whether it's a promise to do something and we don't do it, a promise to ourselves or someone else or a promise to not do something and then we do it, um, what happens is there's a little husk. It looks like a little corn husk. It's called a clipo. And the light goes in there, but it's dark light. And it attaches to us and it kind of hangs on us. So when I invoke the violet flame, I ask the violet flame to burn off all of that that's right. attached to me that kind of weighs me down. And it's incredible. I've actually created in my own meditations a crystal chamber. It's hollow, it's a tube. And there's a metal plate you step on and the metal is gold and it's vented and you step in that. And when I say violet flame come forth three times, it comes and it like burns off all my impurities. So that's, that's how creative I got with it. It's, it's beautiful. And one of the things that people could do is they can go to YouTube and type in violet flame on YouTube. And as you're watching the violet flame, it'll, it'll be like an image or an animation of a violet flame burning. Um, and as you're watching that, you envision yourself uh, in that flame, you envision, envision yourself in that violet fire. And, and what's that that is doing? It's a cleansing effect. It's a transformation effect. It's cleaning, it's purifying, it's raising the vib vibration of your entire auric being. Mm. Um, you know, one thing that I wanted to do with Soma at some point in time was I was like trying to find the chemicals uh, that I needed to make actual vi vi violet fire because that was like one of my goals. Uh, last year was to, to try to make like actual violet fire like at soma sanctuary isn't it isn't it because something when you stare like, at that and you look at it you be you become that but but like i've seen when i've like thrown salt on a fire and violet will come mm -hmm. forward you know um that's yeah, one of the ingredients rob what is one of your favorite violet flame invocations oh that one that charlie just recited i've been saying that for years that the was tube of that. light yeah i love that and that one, that's that's pretty much the one that uh, I invoke every morning before I uh, I start my meditation. Or if I wake up in the middle of the night and I start to feel that, you know, I want to go back to sleep, I just start to recite that that uh, prayer, that recitation, and then I go right back to bed and I'm good. Uh, so, 
becomes second nature. It becomes a second nature yeah. thing. Especially Magdalene, Magdalene is here and she um, she has a couple words that she'd like to share with us. Oh, please do. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring her forth right now, and then we can open up the floor to questions and answers. Um, for anyone who's on Zoom, you guys can go ahead and um, just unmute yourselves and ask questions. And anybody that's watching on um, Facebook, you guys can type it in because I got a simulcast going on. All right, she's coming in, so I'm going to go in. Greetings, beloveds. Welcome. It Thank is you. our delight to be with you. It is our delight to have all of these blessed and beloved souls joined together. Beloveds, these are indeed time of turmoil and time of transformation. Each of you are much like the caterpillar melting into your chrysalis state and the emergence, the transformation, and the shift to other dimensions is assured for all. What will make the transition easier? What will make the transition softer and smoother is for you to relinquish the fear, for you to release the control, for you to surrender to your own divinity, to your own light, and to allow yourself to join with source, to allow yourself to join with the mind of God. For it exists within each of you. You need only go within and take a breath and surrender to your divinity and you are at once returned home, home to the very essence of love that you are, home to the pure miracle of beingness that you were created to be. Know that you are held and deeply loved, that you are living inside of an illusion that may feel very real, that may be filled with turmoil, but turn away from the noise. Turn away from the fear, beloveds. And know that by calling out to us, we will help to calm you. We will help to bring you our love. We will bathe you in our light for you are precious and you are needed and you are necessary. Thank you to all of you, the light workers that you are, for the messages that you bring, for the love that you share, for you are so important and you are indeed needed, beloveds. You are deeply honored by us, and we thank you. Please reach out so that we may continue to assist you in your journeys. Thank you. Blessings thank you. to you. I appreciate you coming, giving us these messages. She's a beauty. She's an absolute beauty. Does anyone have any questions? Hi, Miriamme. Does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask at this time? Um, I know that we've got a bunch of people online. Anything that you would like to know about messages from spirit, any messages that you would like to have delivered, any Thing that you could possibly ask that we could help you with. I 
I love how she it. advised to tune out the outside world if it's a distraction to your peace. Yeah. I think that's so important. Yeah. Um, there's an incredible community that I've become involved with. It's called Channeling Jesus. And there's a brave, brave woman by the name of Tina Spaulding. And uh, several years ago, she had a incredible Kundalini download that opened her up and she started channeling a collective called Ananda. And then she was told she was going to channel um, 20 celebrities. And it was Marilyn Monroe and it was Albert Einstein and JFK. And she got to the 19th person and she knew the 20th person was coming. And she said to herself, please don't let it be Jesus. Please don't let it be Jesus. And of course it was. And then they began this incredible journey and they've written books together, including Jesus, my autobiography. And I came across her last year and I joined the community on January 1st to start the study of A Course in Miracles. And they're doing a project right now. It's called 40 Days and 40 Nights. And I believe we're on day 13 today where she is channeling Jesus every single morning and every single night. And he's coming through and he's blasting. He's blasting everybody. He's talking about you know, social media, he's talking about television. He's talking about how we're taking care of our bodies and how we're, how we're not taking care of our bodies. He's talking about the galactic council. He's talking about the photon belt. I mean, he's, there is no subject he's not discussing. It's all free content on YouTube right now. So if you guys want to step on to like the, you know how when you're in the airport and you can walk or there's that belt that goes quickly where you can walk even faster. If you guys want to step on the escalator, um, look for on YouTube, Channeling Jesus, 40 Days, 40 Nights, and prepare to have your little minds, hearts, and souls blown. Absolutely incredible. It definitely is the express route uh, put out there by, you know, through this woman, Tina, and uh, with the assistance of Jesus. And like Lynn said, each morning and each evening, the messages are really hitting the mark. Um, they're quick, they're poignant. I don't think any one of them is more than 15 minutes from beginning. No, they haven't, I think 10 or 11 minutes. They're very, minute. very quick. And I- Five minutes, seven uh, minutes, eight uh, minutes, nine minutes, yeah. I shared them with a multitude of people when they first yeah. started. Uh, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Uh, and it caused me to, it reinforces a lot of the messages that I receive uh, mm -hmm. from Jesus, from, from so many of them, because they're all telling us the same thing. We're all being yeah. told that it's love and light and we're at this precipice. Uh, the old way of doing things is going away. The balance is returning. And it's up to us to stay out of fear. And the best, best way to do that is just turn the news off uh, because it's designed to, to keep you afraid. And uh, you know that's the best way to control people and lower their vibration is through fear. And uh, each of our networks competes one to the other of who can have the scariest stuff to teach us and keeps us going back for more for that little shot of dopamine. So um, yeah, there's a, a, a phenomenal amount of information within that channeling Jesus 40 days and nights. And uh, if you have time, definitely do the research and listen to it. It's good stuff. Uh, but it's- So nice my walk. friend Gina just said that, that he's really, really present and that he's coming through so many right now. And he's actually here right now. And um, <laughs> he said, you know, this is what you've been prepared for. And there's part of me, like Lynn, that goes, I don't know that I want to channel Jesus, but it, it's, it feels like it's part of a soul contract. And I just have to surrender and let my ego go and just really allow um, myself to be of service. And, um, you know, if, if all the training that I've received from my girlfriend, Wendy, and from Metatron, and all the work that I've done with everyone else that I've channel has has prepared me to help deliver his messages um and that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to take a moment and i'm going to bring him through Greetings, dear ones. Greetings. We 
thank you for your presence here with us. We thank you for the journey that each of you are upon. We thank you for agreeing to participate in all that is transpiring here and now. We know each of you as you know us. We are here to lead you back to yourselves. We are here to remind you of who you are. And you are not the bodies that you think you are. You are not the thoughts that you have. You are not the judgments that you make. You are not the actions that you take. You are not the angry words that you speak or that you feel. You are not the thoughts of revenge. You are light. You are love. You are precious and you are pure and you have forgotten and we are here to remind you. We know who you are and you do as well. We speak to you, we whisper to you, we give you signs, we give you symbols, we give you numbers, we give you many ways to be able to connect, to be able to remember. And many of you are, many of you are listening, many of you are seeing, many of you are recognizing ask for more, ask for us to show you, ask for us to lead you. This is what we are here to do. The times that are coming will be far rougher than even you can imagine. And you will need to raise your frequencies. You will need to stay above the fray. You will need to eat more cleanly. You will need to exercise more. You will need to spend time in nature. You will need to be in the light for the light that is coming will burn if there is still darkness that is attached. Prepare now, beloveds, so that when the transition and when the shifts occur, you will be prepared and you will not be burned. You will smile in joy. Find your ways to express yourself creatively. What brings you joy? Do you like to color? Do you like to paint? Do you like to sing? Do you like to dance? Do you like to ride your bicycles? Do you like to walk in the rain? You are in a time of deep transition and you each have chosen to be a part of this transition. And for this, we thank you. You are the ones of courage. You are the ones of bravery. You are indeed the warriors of light, but there is not a war. There is a surrender. There is love beyond what your corporeal forms can possibly imagine. Look within, become quiet. Become like children, become innocent. And no, no, beyond the shadow of any doubt that your journey home is assured. We love you, all of you, every aspect of you, beloveds. Know that we are here with you, walking this path home. Blessings to you always, beloveds. We shall speak with you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's the most delightful message. Thank you, Lynn, for stepping aside and letting Jesus come in. It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> Makes sense. It's just 
just a lot of light and a lot of love and a lot of energy. I am literally like broken out in a sweat, like, like having a hot flash. <laughs> Deborah just wrote, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Deborah, he said, you're welcome. <laughs> what, what's funny is now, as we're talking to spirits and people are saying different things, I hear them answer also, like you just heard, you know, when uh, Deborah said, <laughs> and it ha all the time. And it, or, it's, it's funny, you know, or my, my, my brother or my, some of my sisters, I'll be speaking to them. And we'll be talking about my father who's passed and they'll pose a question and I'll hear the answer and I'll just put it right out there. And, you know, yeah. after a couple of answers, they know that it's not me. You know, this is definitely my, you know, my <laughs> father coming through. So, and that's, we have that ability with everybody who is on the other side, you know, there's no one, no one is exempt from this. No one is yeah. exempt from connecting with the, the other side of the veil, as we call it. Yeah. Um, and that veil is just an imaginary curtain that we put up. Yeah. It doesn't really exist. I just want to give a quick shout out to my friend, Sandy Ingham, who is in England, who uh, is an extraordinary artist who works with one of my favorite souls. We call him Leo. And I just want to let her know that I just took the incredible portrait that she did of Hathor, the Egyptian goddess whom I love, adore and channel. I took her to a frame shot and shop and got her the most exquisite frame. It's going to be done by my birthday, which is October 8th. And Sandy, I can't wait to, uh, to share her in her, I got museum glass, which is like this non-reflective glass. And she's going to have a beautiful space up here on the wall. I can't wait to bring her in. This, this world of channeling, this world of bringing through spirit, they just want everyone to know they don't die. They're still there they've left this dimension, they've left this little meat suit that we're in, but they're very, very much alive and they have messages of love and messages of peace, you know, to give all of us. Really, really beautiful. <laughs> Charlie, any, anything else you would like to share? Yeah, I would like to say that, you know, at, when there's times that we feel low and, you know, when you have like certain challenges that come up in life, you know, those are times where, you know, for me, especially like, you'll feel like lonely and there's like, you may not have other people to call on and you say, you know, yeah, I've heard, I've heard people and, and, uh, and spiritual classes say that we're never alone, but we really have to, um, take hold of that and really, and really like Rob was saying before, an important thing is, is asking, asking is huge. If you ask and use that intention to ask um, and know that they are on the other side waiting for us to call them in, they will assist us. So yeah. one of the things really quick that, uh, again, with my Native American teacher said that, you know, if, we, if we're carrying something that's like heavy for us, whether it's uh, any of the shadow emotions, fear, anger, guilt, you know, like Jesus was saying that, you know, we aren't that. You're a being of light and love. That's what you're created from. That is the essence from what you're creative. You're not the ego's shadow emotions. But there's times we feel these shadow emotions and, and it, it takes such a presence with us that you can't almost see outside of the box. You can't see the bigger picture of it. You can't see yourself as a being of love when somebody may have insulted you and you, you feel horrible or you may have said the wrong thing and you feel bad about it and you feel alone. Um, so what I'm saying is, my point is this, is that similar to what Rob was saying, ask, ask and take and, and use that intention to ask and call in if there's like a, a, an ascended being or a guide or a master teacher, Jesus, uh, call them in and say, you know, I ask you to help me with what I have. And I, and I, and I put this in your hands. I put this and I transfer this burden or this, this feeling or this energy that I have that I know isn't my true self, I now give it to you and put it in your hands to help and take this from me. And, you know, one, again, one of the, the lessons that uh, Edna, my guru taught me is that at the time I was having a difficult time when my dad passed and, and feelings that came with that. She says, put it in God's hands. Actually visualize God's hands in front of you 
and put it in God's hands and put that, whatever it is you're worrying about or whatever that feeling is, is that, that you know that you are not and say, God, I ask you to take this from me as I know you will take this and transform it to a higher plane. You transform this to higher light. You will do what is best to help me go to the highest situation possible um, and take this emotion for me that, that I know isn't me and doesn't reside with me. I give this and imagine putting that in God's hands and, and let, let God help you with that. Let an ascended being help you with that. Let an archangel help you with that. Put it in their hands. Again, like you and Rob both say, you know, we're not alone. They are on the other side waiting, but we have to use the intention to connect, ask, and and share and share whatever we're feeling, share whatever we're feeling that we know isn't us, that isn't light, isn't love, that but we're in that moment, we're feeling lowly. Share that with them so they could help us transition to higher light. Beautiful. And then that helps us step out of the shadow energies or the shadow emotions of, of ego. Thank you so much, beloved. It has been a delight to have you here with us. Well, thanks for having me. That's Absolutely. Very nice. Thank, Thank you, Rob. Rob, is there is there anything, any final words you'd like to bring us, my love? Well, just circling back through what Charlie was just saying, this giving it up to God or to Jesus to take is just the power of transmutation. And it's really up to no one else to take it or process it for us, but us. It's for us to just say, I give this up. I give it to the power of the violet flame mm -hmm. to transmute and take that energy that was once utilized for something that no longer serves me and recycle it, put it back in the storehouse so I can use it again for whatever I need next. Whatever I want to put energy into, that energy is there. It's requalified. It's 100% pristine, ready to be reused again. And that's what transmutation does. It was explained to me that all energy has to be qualified. We can't go through this and say, okay, well, that stuff, I left and it's garbage and it's in the it's in the trash heap. No, you have to go into the trash heap. You have to take everything out of the dumpster and envelop it in violet and have it and reutilize it for what you want to create going forward. There's only so much energy. There's a finite amount each each individual gets when they come to the earth plane. So you have to be able to utilize as much as you can to make it to the point of ascension. If you got all this stuff holding you down, you cannot ascend. Okay. That's, no that's more, sweep, no more sweeping under the rug, right, Rob? Uh, yeah, no, there is no hiding. Everything gets transmuted. And since violet is the highest frequency in the visible light spectrum, it's the color that they use to purify air, purify surgical equipment, right? Violet, it's what they use in everything, right? And that's that's it. It, it works etherically and physically on the earth plane. So that's the main color. And that is the color that we should focus on as we go into the age of Aquarius. Yeah. Gorgeous. Uh, and it keeps us light and free and able to fly and create. Thank you to everyone who came. Thank you to Thank everyone you. who participated. Sending you all so much love. Wishing you a beautiful, beautiful week. The next eight days before Yom Kippur, the, the masters, teachers, the loved ones, and the lords of the records, they're looking. And it's a chance for us to make a difference about what gets written into our records for the next year. So atone, forgive and apologize and just, you know, like be on your best behavior, everybody live from love, live from your hearts and pause before you're going to react and instead learn to respond and respond with love. I love you all. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week.